Welcome back to the Off the Tap podcast. This is episode 21. And this week we're doing Hop and Sting Brewing Company's Galactic Haze IPA. Mm. That was a I picked this one out. Andrew did pick this one out <laughs> weeks ago. All we right. were finally able to get our hands on it. Dude, this thing just like straight up shot onto my computer. It, it looked like, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Just shot onto my computer. Crispy. Sound like a, sounded like a nice crispy boy. It did sound like a nice crispy boy. I want to point out that our <laughs> podcast is now legal drinking age. It is. Wow. This if, is the... if you could drink at 21 weeks of age. It, well, <laughs> you know, I think 21 weeks is just at 21 weeks in the podcast world is equivalent to 21 years in the human world. I when it's consecutive weeks, out. you know, we're getting like, old boys. I can see yeah. that. Yeah, we're going to be 52 by the end of the year. And one month we will be just over one month. We will be half a year old. Wow. Wow. Yeah, well, that's crazy. Ah. Well, I think this this can looks really freaking tight, by the way. Do you, do you see why I picked it? Yeah, I, I do see why you picked it. Uh, Don't look at the can too heavy, Sean. You're going to be disqualified. Okay, okay. I, I think as, you I know think what as I've long as you look in the front, that, you're okay. I'm looking at the yeah, front this, right now. This is a very lazy... I don't know I don't know what we call it, laz, lazily made, but... If you look close, you'll notice that this isn't it's printed not on the can. Command. Yeah, so, it's a uh, plastic wrap around a straight, regular aluminum mm, can. I just noticed that. Now, I, I will say, I like what's printed on there. It reminds me of like eighty, like you could hear some eighties music playing. Like you're about to play Galaga, kind of, kind of. It's very Galaga, Tron, Tron. Yeah, but uh, I do not like the plastic wrap. Um, uh, there's West a lot of breweries man. up Save in the, the Dallas turtles. area that do that. Save I don't know why. Turtle, I don't. Man. I don't know if it's like, uh, maybe it's a a cheaper way of going about, you know, uh, putting the stuff on the can. I, I don't know. It has to be. It's not going to save the sea turtles because it's got. Now you're adding the addition of plastic to the metal, so it's exactly. like to the already bad can. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. It looks. Uh, cool, I like though. it. I like the colors that. That green is like one of my favorite colors on the planet. Like, uh, it's pretty nice. Oh, I don't is know if like, I'd call it like forest green, but it's close to it. I was gonna say like forest green. Yeah, I can see colors now. I would oh, wow. say that looks to me like the uh, that looks like a more like a fairway green. Oh wow! <laughs> well, I'm gonna get into tasting it. <laughs> yeah, well, I agree. Y'all don't mind. We go for the go for the old taste, and then we mm -hmm. guess the ABV. And then we'll rate it. Is that the way we're doing things nowadays? The do you know your ABVs? All right. Yeah, honestly, I, straight up looks like orange juice. Yeah, Sean poured his into a glass this uh, this week. I I did as well, and I think I prefer it this way because I can get more of it in my mouth at once. So it's like I can get like a full flavor profile. You want your right, mouth guys, full. we're gonna yeah. we're gonna test my sommelier sniffing skills. Okay. Uh, before I even taste it. Smells like an IPA. It smells like the mix between a Hopadillo and a Blue Moon. Well, it is a it's a Belgian style. What does it say? Say a that Belgian style something IPA. Belgian style white IPA. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Huh. So, it tastes exactly how it smells. Yeah. Well, I can't smell it because uh, the cans are far away from my nose, but it tastes very good. I still haven't got my smell back from COVID, so. Really, I think I think that's gone yeah. for life. Right? I have my taste, but smell, nope. It is a, it is pretty citrusy, as compared to like a hopadillo or something, you know. It's, it's got very a little... thick. Mm -hmm. Not it's... not in consistency, but in in color. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was about to say it's not as thick as that uh, that heavy hands we did a few weeks ago, though. No, not like a molasses thick, like a mm -mm. Galveston water thick. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh not clear. I don't what, what's the what's what's the opposite of clear? Dense. Dirty. Dirty. Uh, I think dirty does it. I would call it opaque, wouldn't you? Like kind of. Sure, that sounds about right. Opaque. I don't know. I'm not an artist. I think opaque's a good word. 
I don't know. It tastes good. That's though. the color of that's the color you want fish to be when you cook it is opaque, and that lets you know it's done. So, <laughs> really, I didn't <laughs> yeah. know that. I've never cooked fish. If I'm being honest, if I if I had to, I, I mean, to put it in sort of a um, how do I how do I put this a PG sounding way? Uh, not urine, but uh, hmm. yeah. You don't ah. want your fish to you don't want your fish to taste like urine. No, no, mm -hmm. no. I'm talking about mm -hmm. just color. No, 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 no. Nope, that's not what I'm talking <laughs> about. All right. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I, I understand what's happening. I get it. All right. Who wants to go first? Who thinks they know it? Me. Okay. Six point two. Hmm. That was quick. Right off the rip. I got it. Right on the money. I'm gonna go five. Not any closer. Nine. Not any further. Mm. You're wrong. It's six point two. What about you, Andrew? Uh, hmm. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go six point three nine two five. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Took you that long to come up with those numbers? <laughs> yeah. Let's see. All right. What is it? Find it. Seven point two. <laughs> Holy! Oh my God. Are you serious? Seven. Your brewmaster of the evening. It doesn't feel that. No shot. It didn't. Bad. It didn't take me that long to come up with those numbers. It took me that long to come up with the winning numbers. Okay. Well, I actually, I actually meant seven point two, but I actually said six point two. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't happen. Doesn't. It doesn't change not anymore. Anything. Not any less. You know, man. The streak has been broken. Fourth time is not the charm. I was way off. Well, at least now we've all been brewmaster before. Yeah, we have. This is good. Now we get three different experiences. Everybody drinks. Let's go. Oh, Everybody man. drinks. All right. right. Mm-hmm. This is gonna be a good one. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna love it. The uh, <laughs> initial ratings. Yep. Um, I don't know. I have to go go back and see what I gave other ones, other IPAs we've done at least. Um. Because, I, I mean, I like this, but I don't think I like it as much as I like the heavy hands. I like the heavy hands more, but I like the conspiracy theory less. Yeah. Uh, you never did a rating for the heavy hands, Andrew. Really? Yeah, because you didn't have taste. Yeah, you had the Roni. Wow. Well, I, t I had a couple a few days after, I mean, of some, at some point whenever I had gotten my taste back. I really like the heavy hands. I would say I'd probably give the heavy hands. What I give the conspiracy theory? Can you see that? Uh, yeah, you gave the conspiracy theory a five point four. Okay, because I was gonna say heavy hands, I would give like a seven point seven. Okay. And this beer, I'm gonna rock and roll with probably a seven point three. I can get on I think that. Think I'm. Hmm. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with like probably a low six, low to medium sixes, six four. Give it a six, six four. four. Yeah. yeah, I think I'll go six flat on this one. I don't not, think IPAs fare very well on this podcast. Uh, I mean, depends. IPAs just aren't my favorite beer. I mean, I I enjoy them uh, to an extent, but I did, I think the heavy hands was better, and I think. Uh, yeah, I think the uh, conspiracy theory was it. The conspiracy theory was a little bit more uh, like dry to me. It was still good. I don't think yeah, I agree. I don't think I've ever talked to someone who IPA is their favorite beer. Oh really? Well, you have a lot of good friends then. You know? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Here, so here's what I gotta say about it: is it's kind of like a what you would think of as an IPA, like any normal IPA. You're just thinking about that, and then add quite a good amount of citrus to it. Yep, and it's just not doing it for me. You you got to pick one or the other. It's a it's a Belgian style, Belgian style wheat ale. Is that what I said? White Belgian style white IPA. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Blue Moon is a Belgian style white, but it's not IPA. Belgian's no, a wheat beer, or I mean, uh, Blue Moon's a, a Belgian wheat. A Belgian yeah. wheat. Yeah. So take Blue Moon and take Hoppadillo, like I said, with the smell, and put them together, and that's kind of what you're getting here. I like this. I like this. It's probably one of my favorite IPAs, though. It's pretty good for an IPA. That's wow. one of the best four IPAs you ever had? Um, That's fair. Pro that's probably top two. 
Probably top yeah. two. Two out of four. Top two out of four. No, I've had probably about six or seven IPAs. Ippas, you know. I love a good Ippa. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It right, just doesn't well. go down. It do, doesn't go down very smooth. Mm. It's a different. It's a different flavor, like you said. It's like not what you expect an IPA to be, but it's not. I don't know. I it's not horrible. But it's definitely not my favorite that I've had. We might change our minds. Maybe by the second one, we're just totally lit, and we'll figure it out. Well, probably Something since this is a seven point two. Not to mention, not to mention, everybody drinks. Oh, good. Everybody God. drinks. You know, you know that we got two of these a piece, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're limited this week. All right. <laughs> I think that's a good thing with this one, though, because yeah, it might get litty really quickly. You know what I mean? Mm, I agree. Yeah. Mm. Well, we're gonna try to stay on uh, well, beer topic, I guess, this week a little bit and talk about some space stuff. Beer topics. Beer topics. You know what I mean? Top, um, topics. Space over topics. Beer. I think one of the biggest debatable things about space is whether or not there is life outside of like earth, you know, <clears throat> how do y'all feel about that? Cause I know my stance. We going with, we going with any life at all or intelligent life. Let's say intelligent life. Cause obviously there has to be like, you know, there's microorganisms and stuff floating around the galaxy and stuff, but like possibly intelligent life, you know what I mean? I don't know. There's not even intelligent life on Earth, so it might be kind of hard to find that other places. That's that's a valid uh, statement. I, I, yeah, that does make sense. But I, my sense is that statistically, I would argue for intelligent life being out there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Well, here's my thing is that either they're not that smart or they just think we're really dumb because... If if they were like, wow, there's this other species of intelligent life where there's only five of us, you know, let's fly over there to that little blue planet and say what's up. Either that or they're like, wow, these guys are absolutely idiots and we're not wasting our time to go over there. Well, I would disagree with that statement because, I mean, I think it's humanity is far off from being able to do things like that, to like be able to go great distances through the un to, through the universe, you know. Or discover if there's a multiverse or or things like that. We we are ways away from that. So it does, just because another species that is another intelligent life form hasn't figured it out either, doesn't mean that they're not that intelligent. I mean, there there might not just there might just not be a way to do it effectively. You know, there might not be any way to do it without taking hundreds or thousands of years, multi generational space travel. You know. Not with our resources on on Earth. There's not. Yeah, yeah. My, I don't. I don't think it's. I mean, what if? And then you bring in another argument. Is it like, is it efficient or cost effective with the type of resources we have to do it? They would probably have a different resource if they were able to do it. You know, something that we're like, oh, is that's not even. What kind of matter is that? You know. Yeah, and you know the good thing about space is that you only got to get up to your speed. You don't got to maintain it. You know. Yeah, it's not like it's not like in a car where you got to keep holding down the gas when you once you're going seventy miles an hour. Like in space, you're going seventy miles an hour. You're gonna keep going seventy miles an hour, pretty mm -hmm. much. So, but I mean, even if we could travel at the speed of light, it would still take forty years to get to the closest star, closest solar system. I think, unless I think there was a way years. to travel in black holes and stuff. Unless there was a way yeah, to manipulate we, space and time to to travel. Yeah, you know? but you, if you then you'd have to have like a pocket black hole, because then we'd have to fly to a black hole, if at all possible. Well, it'd do you be think like, like in Star like, Wars, like warp speed? You know, they just they just you, hit it and they're just like zoom, it's gone there. <laughs> do you think? Uh, do you think kind of like Interstellar? There's there's something beyond a black hole like like do you think one day we'll just like say you know like f it we're gonna send john and his wife in there and see what happens and then like just... they could send me if they wanted <laughs> i mean if i had like stage four toe cancer and i was minutes from death i'd be like shoot me out there brother i don't care stage four toe cancer 
Y yeah. yeah, I don't know if toe cancer is essentially fatal, but if, if I had a, a fatal cancer, I, I mean, I would I would side with that. I might would be like, let's see what it, see what it is. I mean, why not? You know, what if you go through the black hole and it cures your toe cancer? Most likely, that's what would happen. And now yeah. you've just got like the most beautiful toes in the planet, and you you come back and you can be a foot model. Like, yeah, you've got like perfectly manicured toenails, and honestly, it would probably just rip your toe off, and I think that might solve the problem. Mm. But we could just do that on Earth, though. Yeah, but we've yeah. done that before. No one's got their toe ripped off by we a black hole. We can get some uh, branch branch or wire cutters and just uh, take your little take your little toe off. Yeah, I'll get some hedge trimmers real quick, brother. <laughs> this this little piggy went to the black hole. Yeah, yeah. I I definitely believe that there's intelligent life somewhere else, and I am a huge believer in aliens. I mean, not, I wouldn't say huge, but like, I definitely believe that we've been visited. Uh, you do? Oh yeah, I do. I, you think I aliens? Think, you think aliens built the pyramids? I think they could have had something to do with it. I don't. I don't know if they actually built it, but I. I they, it, there's just no like other. I don't know. I mean, like, there's other explanations for how it could have happened and stuff. Like, people have done it, but on that large of a scale, is just kind of mind blowing to me. Well, they and also then, like, say the way that hieroglyphs say... are are drawn with like the way some of these quote gods you know look and stuff i don't know it's just it's just a a thought you know but well i was I listening mean, to a, i was to, listening to it's hard to a podcast and they said that the pyramids they had like drill marks in the stone and yeah. like even manual drills were like thousands of years away as right. far as like the technology yeah exactly there's see, just a bunch of see. unexplained stuff what if humans were from the future? Like, what if they got visited by aliens that were humans from the future and are like, here you go, here's this Dewalt 18 volt 3000. It was just, <laughs> it was humans from 1994. <laughs> yeah. They have a whole, they have a whole array of drills now. They, the chariot pulls up and like, zzz, 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 and change the tires real quick and it takes off again. <laughs> That's how NASCAR was invented, brother. Yeah. Um, I've had, I mean, I've had this discussion with my mom before because my mom is there's like she's like there's no way there's just no way that there's something out there that's smarter than us and like if there were why would they come here and abduct like cows that's a pretty disappointing people. perspective to me like i mean that's dark it's like that's lonely you know we're, we're alone yeah well not how only that, is that but this is how i explained it i was like if we had the ability to travel like that through time like through space that quickly and that rapidly and we found another planet with life on it, you're telling me we wouldn't do the exact same thing? Oh, we'd take their version of cow, whatever that is. We would take <laughs> whatever we could find and dissect it to see how it worked. We do that <laughs> yeah. here on our Earth still. We still do that. You we know, would if... take their cow, fill it full of GMOs and all these other crap, and then send it back down there, and then we'd have food for life. Yep, exactly. <laughs> But that's, I don't know, that's just my look of it. I'm just, I'm just like, there's, I don't know. It's a, it's a plausible thing for me. It it, it could have happened and it could still happen. I, I definitely think there's life in the universe. I don't know. I'm sure there's intelligent life somewhere. When you think about the, the macrocosm of the universe, like how big it is, mm -hmm. it's just insane. It's unima it's unimaginable. Like you can't picture how big it is in your head because you cannot physically picture sizes that large you know humans cannot comprehend it yeah it's... aliens can though absolutely no, i want an alien to come down here and like stick its finger in my ear and something and then i'm like magically smart you know i'm glad you said ear oh my <laughs> god I, I want an that alien was going somewhere way off i'm trying to get it i'm trying to get an alien enema and then I just become super smart, and then I just fly off to another universe. I just want, cool all I like, want is for an alien to come down here and give me a wet willy. That's all I want. Just, just one time. I want an alien to come down here and and like we have the technology by then to make them small. And then I want a small alien in my room in a cage, like running on a hamster wheel that I could talk to. <laughs> wow. Well, that seems kind of messed up. That seems kind <laughs> of horrible, dude. Hey, we came all the way here from another universe. 
Oh, that's cool. I'm going to put you in this cage. <laughs> I'm going to make you small and put you in this cage for my personal entertainment. Andrew just had the same yeah, thought that every government official in the 1950s had. <laughs> With the <laughs> zoos. Literally, dude. But let's put the... Oh, alien crash. Going in the cage. <laughs> You're the problem, no, Andrew. I wouldn't, no, me and the alien would be friends. I wouldn't... I would I would no. give him the... <laughs> you would not yeah. be friends. You it's the same situation. Friends. It's the same situation with your dog. Like, how would you like it if one day your dog just woke up one morning and put a leash on you and started like, "Come on, go outside, come on." Some Me and the dog like wouldn't that. be friends. I agree with you. Well, there's Some a thing called like uh, there's it, it's called puppy play. Um, I saw I was I didn't look up a YouTube video of it, but there was a there, a mm -hmm. guy was talking about it and saying how weird these people were, and then was showing videos of these people, and they're like walking around on like their knees and hands and like with collars on chasing balls like there's owners and then dogs at these parties the dogs are people and the owners are people and the owners are like chatting like humans at like a normal part like if if you if if you and five friends had dogs right and y'all would throw a party mm -hmm. you'd all like all the owners would be talking right having some drinks and talking the dogs would be playing it's the same thing at these parties except for the dogs are people <laughs> That's I just, like the dynamic. <laughs> My thing is, is the those people are making probably four or five times the amount of money I'm making. For real, that's true. They get paid. What was I'm liking. One? I remember that one girl that came out and said that she was getting paid like twenty thousand dollars a month to do that or something. Yeah. And I was like, "Uh, sign me up." What? Dude, I will be the. I will be the barkiest dog. I'll be so loud. You give me twenty thousand dollars a month. I'll I will be Airbud. I don't even care. <laughs> oh, what's I'll the, learn how to what's, dunk. What's, I'll grow my hair out. I don't even the, care. What's the dog from Homeward Bound? Or no, I'll be Beethoven. I'll be that Beethoven. One. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's what I'll do. Or or um or 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 uh or I'd be uh. <laughs> The dog from, or the the mangy dog from Lady and the Tramp. You know, I'd be the tramp. <clears throat> I can see that. We all kind of look like him with our mustaches. Mm -hmm. And I did, because my hair look all, looks all fucking wild. Now, now the thing with aliens is when they come down here to Earth, are they going to put leashes on us and we're going to have to be puppy play for the aliens? No, they're just no, going to destroy our Earth. Yeah, the, the, they'll be laughing at us and blasting at us and making us disintegrate and assimilate. And... Another thing that I, I feel like <laughs> could legit could legit be something in the future. I mean, I mean, maybe not legit, but comically legit, you know, is I mean, I know Sean's watched Rick and Morty. Andrew, have you ever seen Rick and Morty? I, I have not. There's an episode where there's a there's a galaxy television network and one of the shows is Earth and it's just been. It's it's just like reality TV. Like they're just filming what's happening happening on Earth, but it's mm -hmm. the most popular TV show because of all the drama that happens and stuff. Yeah, because of all this what's stupid the, crap, like the world wars and stuff, were like a season. What's <laughs> the name of the What's the name of the the movie where they do that with uh What's his face? The Truman, Truman Show. Show. Yeah, Truman Show. No, well, yeah, but it's a little bit different. This it's is a lot on like different. a yeah. This is on like, like a Hunger Games. Scale. That's just. No, not at all. It's no, not it's like Desperate Housewives of Miami. <laughs> yeah, but on a global scale. It's like, it's like Jersey Shore. Just, yeah. It's a reality show. Unscripted reality show. They but just the whole, watch us the blow whole, each other up for World War II? Yeah, but the whole universe is watching it. And I'm like, hey, man. Th there's a very good chance that that could be happening, except it's not, re it's not a reality show. This shit's scripted. And there's just... Hundreds of Dude. millions of people that don't know it is. You know what I mean? Well, there's people that there's people that argue that this is a simulation. It could be happening right. It, 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 yeah, it could already be a thing. Like we could we could all be a TV show. Yeah, exactly. Of course, we're some lame ass characters if we're just like sitting here, you know, on our. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm definitely an NPC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm definitely. I'm not even like a uh, a background character. I'm just. I'm just somebody. I'm like if you, you know if mean? you watch the movie A Bug's Life and then you've got like you know you've got the queen and then you've got like the guy who's the inventor and then you've got like the little baby ant and then I'm just like one of the guys in the background that's like scared of the grasshoppers like just <laughs> you just see my face once <laughs> in the movie <laughs> you know 
<laughs> no, you don't Best even see my, my face. Life. You just see my back. That's all you see. <laughs> you see the. You just see me set back. a seed down and run over. Yeah, I was gonna say Andrew's the guy carrying like the the seed. He just walks past the screen. <laughs> seed is in front of his face as he walks by, so you don't even get to see him. That's me, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm the guy in the background of the movie sitting in the coffee shop, but it's just the back of my head through the window. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's not, I'm not even really doing anything. I'm just there. Mm -hmm. But I'm not. You what don't even know it's me. What are you doing in the coffee shop? Like, what are you doing? I'm drinking a coffee. Are you are you like reading a newspaper? Or are you just exciting? No, I'm literally. Have you have you all seen that episode of uh, the Parks and Recreation where that one where uh, Ben and, and April go to help run the campaign of that one guy. And he's just sitting in his office, staring in the corner of the. <laughs> never seen the show. Yeah, I know you've never seen it. Sean, you know what I'm talking about? I, I've watched Parks and Rec. When I lived in Huntsville, I watched Parks and Rec every night before I went to bed. And I'm pretty sure I watched the entire season four times, maybe five. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I don't think I know what you're talking about. There are only one okay. season. Well, entire series. <clears throat> Come on. We all know what he meant. The Spears what are 7.2, okay? Oh, I said, this, I said the entire season. I meant series. Um, anyways, there's an episode where these two characters go to help run a, like a campaign for some political guy or whatever. And he like tells them thank you for their hard work or whatever. And he's excited to be working with them. And then he goes and sits in his office. And he just sits down at his desk. And he's just smiling and staring into the corner of the room. <laughs> and they're trying to figure out if he's like a robot or whatever. That's oh, me. Oh, yes. I remember that. Yeah. That's me, except I'm just drinking a coffee and sitting in the coffee shop, just fat chilling. At least you're just... enjoying your small little life, you know? You don't spoke until someone speaks wow, your activation code. Dude. No, I'm, wow. I'm, I'm just talking. No, I have a small little life too. I'm just saying, like, in the grand scheme of things, if we were this, the, the TV show, we would all have small little lives. Man. And at least Talk. you're enjoying yours. You know? Talk, I cannot today. Yeah, me either. Say yoda. words right, I can't. <laughs> me either. You say it, gotta you reset say it my like brain. That. You say it like that, it, it kind of helps, though, you know? I'm just, just going to start talking like that, so anytime I mess up, people just think it's normal. <laughs> right? Red leather, yellow leather, you know? Red leather, yellow leather. Red. I can't even do it. I, we tr we've tried it <laughs> so many times, and I still can't do it. So, I got a question. If aliens came down to Earth... Mm -hmm. And we're like, hey, you're the only thing that can save the universe. We need your help. The entire universe depends on you. The Galactic Federation is taking over everything. And if you don't stop them now, they're going to destroy all life in the universe. Would you go or would you be like, sorry, bro, got a math test? They're doing it to me specifically. It's just you. Yeah, I'm going, dude. I would say. And he, and you can't you can't bring any of your family. You'll never see any of your family or friends ever again. Can I like talk to them on like a radio thing? No, it's, it doesn't work like that. So I can't ever talk to them again either. No, this is literally you're you're literally Star Killer or Star Lord from Guardians of the Galaxy. Are they gonna teach me like how to fight really cool? Oh yeah, I'm in then. You tell me I'm gonna yeah, be a absolutely. really sexy green bitch. <laughs> Well, I, mean, I don't want to say I don't I don't want to I don't want to say bitch, bitch. I, a very attractive <laughs> female alien species is that what I'm gonna meet? Yeah, sure. I mean, well, I think I if they were the, the situation the situation might prevent present itself. I think if they were to they talk may or to may us, not. they would come down. And they'd say, "Listen, the three of you have developed a particular set of skills. We see those mustaches. Okay, the aliens are not you. Liam Neeson. Andrew. He's gonna come down to the earth and be like Andrew Simmons. <laughs> I have watched your favorite movie." And I believe that these metaphors will speak to you directly. <laughs> you have a very particular set of skills. <laughs> you I can see. quote Elf from front <laughs> to back. We need that to be able to it's, stop it's the Galactic the other, Federation. The other guys, the other guys is the one I can quote. Uh, but I think they would select us for our mustache game. I believe so too. Maybe me, and then but we you would... shave yours too often. I only shaved it once, uh, and it's it's already like catching up. You know. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> I think it is. It's almost it's almost back to where mine's at. Might already yeah. be better than mine. Nah. I wouldn't say that. <clears throat> I think I would go though. I would go. I would. As long as they, they promise would, to make me a badass. They would probably almost definitely 
pretty much statistically kill me as soon as they got me into space, but I would go. Yeah, they're like, yeah, you're the only one that can save the universe. And then what? you get to every destination, and they're like, all right, you have to fight this guy. And they just like open the airlock and just, and you just get sucked yeah. out, and you're like, well, I can't you're... breathe. And you just float away, frozen. <laughs> they, would be, they would be like, uh, they would be doing like, uh, as much as everyone hates them, like dog fights with like, with species from around the plant, like around the universe, like so, like gladiator <laughs> fights, like 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 us humans, we throw yeah gladiators and tigers. Can I and nominate the Rock? All kinds of stuff, <laughs> yeah, all kinds of stuff in there, right? To represent, well, so they would be like as powerful as us, but for the whole universe, and they they throw us in there, and then like something from another planet Question. that would like just like completely destroy us. Do we get to take a? Do they? Do, does the person of our picking get to take a vehicle with them? A vehicle, yes, um, like a, a like a car. Can I take a car or something to the battle? No, or is it just hand to hand combat? Because to the battle, no, they, can, car, they can 3D print them somebody a car. Okay, I'm choosing Vin they, Diesel then, and they can give you <laughs> and they can give you a weapon of your choice. I would choose, um, I would I would choose. Let's see. Vin Diesel's in this big circular arena, just tail whip drifting people in a 1974 Dodge Challenger, just <laughs> yeah. popping wheelies and landing on top of people. Literally. Literally. I think I, I think The Rock was a good choice. I think I would go with The Rock, the rock and I would have them print me a Dewalt 18 volt nine, <laughs> uh, uh, in a, a nuclear bomb. Well, that's just lame, dude. Well, it's like whenever you're a kid, what, the entire you rock, paper, scissors, and then the kid goes, God, who wins? Who wins? Not that kid, because that's not a part of the game. <laughs> yeah, but that here's, kid gets here's the thing. In the face and called <laughs> yeah. a nerd. That's what happens. The thing <laughs> is, is you're going to send Dwayne the Rock Johnson off to this alien planet with a nuclear bomb, and then you're going to get there, and everyone you're fighting is going to be cockroaches. <laughs> it's going to be a planet full of cockroaches. Or, or he has to fight against 3,000 chickens. I think he still has a chance. That's why you think I he's going to be three thousand chickens and a, and a challenger, bro. Because you think he's going to be three thousand chickens? Are they like genetically modified chickens, or are they they're like re- organic they're, chickens? They're, they're, they're regular are they chickens. chickens. Are, are they regular chickens? chickens, or are they just regular chickens? They're, yeah, how long they're is regular time? chickens with spurs on them? So I think he has roosters. a chance. Three thousand? Does he get? Do they come in waves? Does he get a break between each wave? No, three thousand chickens get released at once, and the chickens at decide once. what they're going to do. So if the chickens <laughs> decide to go in waves, they go in waves. But if the chickens all come at once to take this man down, who do you but think what, wins? But what if the chicken just the chickens just do nothing? I just pictured in my head. <laughs> the, I just pictured in my head. <laughs> Three thousand chickens standing around Dwayne Johnson, okay. and they all just they all just look at each other, and they're like. And they just go instantly. <laughs> they all give each other a, a subtle nod, and then they all attack at once. Yes. He, I don't think. Yeah, all at once. No, maybe twenty at a time. I don't think he has a chance against thousand times chickens. That's kind of an unfair <laughs> fight, dude. Yeah. I don't me. think he has a chance if if we do it Sean's way because he gets no break if he survives a this a, like, a round look, of chickens, this, look, this is not a round of come right in after look, right in after no, right what in if after. he can, if what if talking, there's checkpoints where he can save and no. like go to sleep no. if we're talking <laughs> straight dogfight tactics like Vince like uh uh what's what's his name <laughs> Vin not Diesel Vince. not Vince. No, not Vin Diesel well, not Vin it's, not uh, I was thinking Michael, Vince Michael, Michael Vick. Vick there you go like Michael Vick like dog like mono e mono like they're not gonna drop in like seventeen chihuahuas against a pit bull. They're gonna drop one chihuahua against a pit bull. That's how it goes. You go mano a mano. So it's they're not gonna they're not gonna drop three thousand chickens on on Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I think we microchip the chickens. And, Did Michael Vick do that and make them turn? On yeah, dude, he got kicked out of the for that. I understand, but I thought he was like making pit bulls fight pit bulls, and that's still screwed no, up. No, dude, he didn't that's actually make pit bulls fight chihuahuas. Oh, I'm okay. just saying that's not how dog fighting works. Like that's not how any kind of fighting. Yeah, works. man. I know. I know. Like as a kid, you know, if you're you had like Christian upbringing or whatever, you heard the story of David and Goliath. Th- that dog don't hunt in the animal world. No, that just doesn't work. No, no chihuahua was pulling out the slingshot of Jesus and killing a pit bull. You know, it's just not gonna happen. 
No. I'm sorry, but I, I, I agree with the rules of the 3,000 chickens versus Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I think you should make something interesting. Like, okay. That, okay. Well, Dwayne that the Rock Johnson sense. survives the 3,000 chickens and he's the champion, right? So now we're like, okay, what else can we bring in there? Dwayne the Rock Johnson versus 1 million fire ants. <laughs> Nobody is going to win that. Yeah, nobody's winning that. Strength in numbers, brother. And they can lift 10, what is it, 10 or 100 10 times, their times their weight? weight. One, million, yeah. 1 million ants could pick Dwayne the, Rock, Drug, Dwayne the Rock Johnson up and throw his ass across the room. Mm. Or I don't they know just if they have bite him force, 17 but... times and kill him. Have you ever seen Indiana Jones and the uh, Crystal Skull? Where all those giant ants yeah, in like that part Africa or whatever? That the hell out, dude, every time. Great film. It's in, uh, no, it's not in Africa. I thought it was in South America. I have no idea where it is, but they're gigantic ants. Yeah, no, they're huge, and they're just in a swarm. And I, every time I see it, I'm like, <laughs> can't do that. Anything, anything swarms, man. There's a whole thing for it, but I have this weird fear about holes. Mm -hmm. You know, like things with a lot of holes in them, like a beehive. Oh, I just get the shivers, dude. And I look at that, I'm like, I would like this whole building on fire. I don't even care. Get that thing away from me. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. think it all started. It all started with those, you know, those weird plants. It's like a lotus or something, not like a lotus yeah. flower, but like the plant that comes up and it looks like a honeycomb mm -hmm. with all the little holes in it. I just always imagine. Oh, little, I've never seen a, that. I don't know what that I is. I just always imagine a bunch of bugs crawling out of it, and I can't stand it. You said lotus, and I immediately thought locust. Yeah, like no, the things that, that shed their skin. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was no, like, not oh, that. it's even worse. Those yeah, things that creep would be the worse. Hell out. Yes. I hate those things. I have always okay. hated those things. Dwayne the Rock Johnson versus 1,000 locusts. <laughs> well, they're not going to kill him. What are they going to... I, I think with enough numbers, any, anything's losing a fight. Dwayne the Rock Johnson versus 40 chihuahuas. <laughs> See, that's plenty of chihuahuas. I'm talking like... <laughs> I, think, I think, honestly, for me personally, I think one chihuahua is enough. That might kill me. I don't know. I, I think Dwayne the, yeah, I think Dwayne the Rock Johnson wins against forty Chihuahuas. Well, it's like no. the elephant. It's There's like no elephant. way he wins against forty Chihuahuas, but loses to three hundred chickens, dude. Three thousand chickens. Three thousand chickens. Like it makes a difference. It does did make you a difference. Three thousand earlier. Were you? Did you? Yeah. Were we really discussing three thousand? Yeah, he said three thousand. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Well, yeah. No, that makes sense then. Yeah. Yeah. I well, think I, could, I think I could. I think I think a hundred Chihuahuas take him. But I think 40 chihuahuas? No, no chance. He's, he's got him. He's got him. There's no you put way, me, dude. You put me he on will the, pump the that the dog. Ocean. He will pump that dog. chihuahua is, dude? Yes, but dude, he's Dwayne the Rock Johnson. You know, he has if like 1,000 1, pounds per square jugular, inch. If one force. chihuahua gets to his jugular, it's over. They're going to bite in their teeth. They're going to crush. A chihuahua's not getting to his jugular. Bullshit, 40 of unless, them. Unless the chihuahuas somehow become intelligent and say, let's go for the Achilles tendon, take him down to the ground, and get his jugular, <laughs> they, they, they're well, not they're getting his jugular. They're the same height as an Achilles tendon, <laughs> so that's a very plausible outcome. They're in a machine gun bunker on the beaches of Normandy with a map in front of them and three generals in there like, okay, so he's about to come here at midnight. The fight starts now. Tommy, take the left flank. You take his left Achilles. <laughs> Billy. You take his right leg, back in the kneecap. Tommy, once he's down, go for the jugular. There's a lot of Tommies well, in there. You're just saying that they Everybody's could do it with like Tommy, three chihuahuas. chihuahuas. You just did it with three chihuahuas. I, I still think they would still need like 10 or 15 chihuahuas, even if they were smart enough to make a Yeah, plan. well, see, in, well, I don't know. In your story, you have strength in numbers. My chihuahuas are hyper-intelligent chihuahuas. <laughs> Yeah. So that is the kind of discussion we're talking. That's the kind of discussion we're having about life in in in, in the in the universe. Are they in hyper intelligent chihuahuas or are they strength in numbers chihuahuas? I'll tell you what. This whole conversation reminds me of. Has anyone ever read the book or seen the movie Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Mm -mm. I've read it. Yeah, I well, I've read it, but I read it when I was like really young. Fantastic movie. It's like fifteen and, years and, ago. And fantastic book. One of the only things the that movie. you will ever read. Where the movie and the book are almost exactly identical, like they spared no, where the they book spared almost, no expense on the story. Matches the movie. Yeah, is it really that great. good of a movie? Like I would, I'll, I'll rent it and watch it tonight. If you're telling me it's that good of a movie, oh, it's great. It's very, it's very weird. You know, it's not like a, it's not like John Wick. You know, it's not like John Wick great. It's great in its own respect. 
Okay, well then I might not run it. I don't think I've ever seen the movie. <laughs> I might have seen it. I think it. you should both watch it. It's I've, amazing. I might have seen it in like passing, but I've never actually like watched it, you know? Randall, Zoe Deschanel's in it. I'm watching it tonight. <laughs> um, <laughs> is she I, I really? Know, I know. It's not that old? No. I hmm. thought it was like significantly older. I remember like a like it being really older, unless they redid no. it, I guess. It's like 2000s. Really? Yeah. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I don't remember... I, I don't remember Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I remember... Uh, what was that? There was one movie that was about like... A, it was almost like freaking uh, Jumanji, but it was like the space game. Do you remember watching that one? It had um, the main guy from the Hunger Games that like got really popular. He was in it. I think he was also in Bridge to Terabithia, wasn't he? Yeah, I think his name's Josh. Josh yeah, something. Josh, some, Josh McCutcheon. I think it's a baseball player. I love the movie Bridge no, to Terabithia. That's... So. <laughs> no, that's... <laughs> Whatever Andrew, that guy's name is. Andrew, PETA from... No, that's Andrew... PETA? That's Andrew McCutcheon, I think you're right. PETA from the Hunger Games. You know, when we get to a point where we start not being able to remember stuff, I'm just going to switch up the subject. I'm going to throw another one out there. How do y'all feel about the multiverse? Oh, 100%. Oh, I think it's definitely a thing. 100,000%. 100%. So what's is your it, definition, though? Isn't is there one... There's like a theory... Sorry, really quick before we do that. Isn't there like a theory that... Uh, that like when you have... Um, what's it called? Deja vu. That's like... Like like something linking up with so, your multiverse or yeah, something. Yeah, I don't know. I don't some know if other, I believe in that. Some other universe leakage or something. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I believe in that. But I don't I, know if I believe in that. But I definitely believe that there's a multiverse out out there. Oh yeah. I mean, See, it, just, we didn't some, know that there was. We oh, we had this. We had the sun, right? We thought the sun revolved around us. Then all of a sudden, we discovered this. We revolve around the sun. Then we discovered that there's a whole other. You know, depending on what you want to look at, it eight or nine planets that revolve around the sun as well. Oh, then there's planets. another solar system. Oh, then there's another solar system. Oh, then there's another galaxy. So e e there's a step in, in learning, and I think we just haven't reached a step to find that other universe yet, but we will. There's another one. I mean, there's no way there isn't to me. See, Randall, with your theory, I heard this guy the other day, and he was like, what if when we die, the light at the end of the tunnel is just like the exit of our mother's wombs into the emergency room? And when we have deja vu, it's just a something we remember from our past life. And I was like, okay, well, your whole theory is based off that there that is a light when you die. <laughs> yeah. I was like, which, if you, which if, is if kind if of someone like said that, or it's been kind of like scientifically proven that that quote light they see is just like, it has something to do with like the blood cells in your brain. Like when you die, they're like, I, the I don't DMT think they're like exploding or whatever. The DMT. It's or not like, DMT, what is it called? Fentanyl. I don't know. It's something. No, in your what's brain that drug that people do? You see, like a light. Any any uh, psychedelic. <laughs> I know, but what but what's the one that naturally occurring when you die that they say is released? Is it DMT? Yeah, oh, I, have no idea. I don't know if that's what it's called, but that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yes. Talking about I run DMC? DMC. No, not DMCA. No, that's that's what happens whenever you play copyrighted music on your. I thought you were talking about run DMC. No, I I Damn. genuinely don't know what it's called, but that's what it's I'm DM talking DMT. About. Is it? Yeah. It's like released in your in your brain or whatever, and it makes you experience like a super incredible high, basically. When you so that you're happy when you die. And it's like a light. And that's why everyone says they see a light when they die. Wow. If they're obviously no one says it when they actually die, but when they're brought back to life and they say, I see I saw a yeah. light. I had that's a near death experience. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's he's been dead for twenty five hours. I see the light. Wait a second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, he's back. I see the light. No, Timmy, you just did heroin. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, wowzer. I don't, I don't know, man. Uh, okay, so how how would y'all define the multiverse? I don't know what you mean by that question. I mean, I, like, I define like, what do you, it as just what do you like think? alternate realities. You know what I mean? Do you think? Do you think it is like how they're like how some people describe it as in like if I would have went to Chick Fil A, I was thinking about going to Chick Fil A or Taco Bell for lunch today, and I went to Taco Bell. Now there's an alternate reality where I went to Chick Fil A. I don't think I. No. I don't know if I, I don't, don't know if so. necessarily there's because... one for like every decision like that, but more or less like, you know, like what if what if we weren't like the main species on the planet? You know what I mean? Like what if instead of of humans being like, well, dolphins are technically the most intelligent, right? But what if you know instead of humans well, I think being humans like are technically the most intelligent, but yeah. 
But like, you know, if humans weren't the most intelligent and instead it was like apes were the most intelligent and we were actually or apes or chihuahuas were the most intelligent, you know, speak like that's more or less what I feel. Like. I don't think there's like because that there would be. Well, that makes sense, though. If, there, if it's like a endless multiverse, you know, then you have well, to me, well, all to of me, these different, you know, s- decisions you could make. And there's all these different universes where it happened. Well, philosophically, uh, t- t- philosophically to me, yes. If I about. go to, if I go to Taco Bell, <laughs> but my plan was to go to Chick Fil A, yes, that's a different reality than what it would have been before. Uh, but I don't think that it's necessarily a new reality. I think it's just me altering my reality or the reality of our world. I don't think mm. there's infinite other worlds that have infinite other hu- human, I mean, inf- human worlds that have infinite Andrews on it where their pathway is the same to mine up until this. I, I don't believe all that. Yeah. Crap. That's, that's, I, I think I agree with you there. That was so, a good way so to I, explain it. I had this, I had this conversation with myself in the shower like a month ago. Cause I think about things like this all the time. Uh, but I was I was in there and I was like, well, it doesn't really make sense you if do you a think lot about things in the shower than I used to do. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> well, that's for another day. Uh, <laughs> but so I was thinking, I was like, <clears throat> it wouldn't really make sense if there was a different universe for every decision that we made in our entire life, or for anything that happened. Let's say something. Let's say I, if I stub my toe and what if I would have stubbed my pinky toe? These are terrible examples, but you know, and now boom, there's a whole new universe where I stub my pinky toe instead. So mm-hmm. just think about the basic start of life. Yeah. Let's call it, let's call it, there's seven, close to 7 billion people on the planet right now. I think it's eight now. There's almost 8 billion. Close to eight, maybe. And to think about how many people have been on the planet mm-hmm. and how many, like, you know, and now we're just narrowing it down to humans. Like, why are humans the only people where their decision causes an alternate reality? And now we're just sounding, right. now we're just sounding selfish. But when you break it down, let's let's just say now there's close to eight billion people on the planet, and all of those eight billion people, four let's just cut it in half, four billion males mate with four billion females, and each male has a hundred thousand sperm. You know, are you creating a one are you creating one hundred thousand different realities per four billion babies? That yeah, just seems just illogical. Too much to think about, yeah. And then so the with that being said, where each sperm mates with the yeah, so that's illogical. Okay. There's no way that's the case. And then you could say like, hey, there's the reality where mm-hmm. I went to Taco Bell instead of Chick Fil A. But now we're breaking it down to like humans like why am i so special why why do i assume the universe is creating universes just because of what i did because i don't feel that special and it would have to be the same way for all every other eight billion people and then you break it down even further and you're like well let's say there is a multiverse but there's only a new universe or another alternate universe for major events like let's say like world war ii like hitler never came to power or like uh, something, you know, things similar to that. You know, like, okay, well, that's still kind of weird. And then you think, then you ask yourself, what's a major event? Mm-hmm. Like, is there an alternate universe where Earth got destroyed? Well, that still seems kind of small because Earth is very small in comparison to the size of the universe. Is mm-hmm. there an alternate reality where blah, blah, blah? And then you trace it all the way back to the, the Big Bang, you know? And you're well, like, I just, I don't, I don't see you're like, that what, there's... then you think, what well, do you think? Like, mm-hmm. what is a major event? Yeah. You know, because we think of a major event as like World War II, or, but on the cosmological or, or scale, coronavirus, coronavirus. Yeah. But on a cosmological scale, that is the smallest of small events that like tend to the negative Google, you know, like <laughs> to the negative 100, yeah. negative 120, I think like that's so small. So, like, what's a major event that would cause an alternate reality? It'd have to be, like, the Big Bang or something. And so, like, yeah, it just seems like illogical what's a, what's for there a, like, to be a multiple universal, universes. What, what constitutes, like, a universal, you know, big event is what yeah. you're saying. And then if there are, and if there is a multiverse, let's say there's four universes. Mm-hmm. 
think about our universe and how big that is. And I'll take four other ones. Throw four of those into there. Out of those four universes, what constitutes a major event for those four universes to create a fifth? Right. Well, well, but then see that that whenever you bring it up conceptually, that's what makes me think that when you say multiverse, it must mean an infinite number of universes because say there's four universes to exist. What's outside of those universes? There has to be something. It can't just be like a we're okay, we're in these if you were to equate it to something a four room clinic, right? You go into each room and there's that's one universe, right? But there's only four rooms. Unless Outside of that clinic, there's something. It's a simulation. <laughs> you know, it really gets me. Is this, well, like Andrew just asked, mm-hmm. what's, out, what's outside of the four universes, right? Mm-hmm. So that's a good question. I, asked, I had a similar question. So we were sitting in class one day, and I tend to have weird thoughts in class, and I tend to stop paying attention. Like It's like trigger words. Somebody <laughs> will say something, and then it just makes me start thinking about random things. That happens to me a lot, and, and I don't go to class. I'm just by myself. <laughs> so so I, I was thinking about all class, and I asked my professor about it after class, and I was like, <clears throat> so so what if, so let's say we have the Big Bang, right? And it's just nothing at all. And then you have, like, the Big Bang, and then our universe, ex- like, expands, and there's, like, all this space. Mm-hmm. And now we contract all the matter in the universe back into one singular point. What happens to all that space that was just created? You know, where does it go? Like, so you have that. Let's let's say we're talking about densities here. This is kind of simple to understand, right? So you have a density where everything's at one point. So you have a, you know, your average density. And then you expand that out into this whole universe. Mm-hmm. And then you bring it all back together to one point. Now your densities are all changed because now you have a much greater area than you had at first. So now something's changed. Now you're losing information, you know. Yeah. Why are you bringing it back? Uh, uh, maybe that's a dumb question. What What do you mean? Well, like I mean, there's a, a lot. There's a, back. there's a couple of theories, you know, about how the universe is going to end. You know, you have there's the big crunch where, so I've heard you've this. heard of like dark energy or whatever, you know, dark matter and dark energy. So dark energy and then is basically the mystical force that we don't know what it is, and it's causing our universe to expand at an accelerated rate. So everything's moving away from each other and and the universe is expanding, right? And everything's getting further away from each other. And so is there enough matter in the universe to say, hey, is there enough matter in the universe to bring all the matter back together as it expands to counteract the expansion, like to slow the expansion enough to where everything comes back together? Or is the universe just going to keep expanding forever because it all expands way too fast? You know? why, why, why do we want to bring it back together? What do you, what do you mean by that? I don't like, think we just want to. I think it's just a theory. It's just a scenario. So like if, there, if there's enough gravity in the universe, then everything will slowly over trillions of years cool. collect back, back together into one singularity as it was in the Big Bang. And that's like the big crunch. All the matter in the universe gotcha. crunches together. Okay. Well, that, my, now I understand what you're so saying. Now here's my biggest question about that is i mean i understand what the big bang was but what is the proof behind the big bang that like so many scientists seem to how know, how did they trace it back there is that what your question yeah is it just because there's like certain molecules or like whatever just like constantly expanding is the big bang a theory or is it is it it's, no, it's definitely called, a theory there's it's definitely called there's the no. big bang theory like if that's not just a tv show that's actually what it's called there's yeah, no definite so, so proof they, behind so, it. Yeah, so they don't know that that happened. That's, That's just, just a guess at what happened. They don't have anything yeah, I mean, to like back it up, though. That's just what they think happened. Pretty much anything's either. a theory until you can collect enough experimental evidence. But that's, to that's make it true, into a though. Law. So, like, what made them develop that theory, though? Like, wh- how were they able to trace it back to that? Or was that just it's like some philosophical guy who studied physics saying, hey, this is probably what happened? It's a theory. Well, I'm not remembering it all well, at the moment. That's what a theory, but. I'm not remembering it all at the moment, but I know a major observational piece of evidence for the Big Bang Theory is the cosmic microwave background. Do you know what that is? Mm-mm. No, I don't. So, like, you you basically scan the entire night sky and every single spherical angle you can think of. You know, you just basically make 360s, you know, in the night sky. And then 
so this whole story is just these dudes at Bell Laboratories, right? And they were had this they were trying to they're trying to create a better way for I think it was like cell and I I'm gonna call it radio signal, you know, for further radio transmission. I think I'm I think I'm right about this. They're trying to find a better way for us to communicate via radio and like cell stuff. They're they're working at Bell Laboratories, which is now like AT and T. Uh and so they had like this huge uh, uh, satellite. I'm going to call it a satellite or telescope, or whatever. And they kept getting this weird interference. And so they thought there was bird poop all over the all over the telescope. And I'm not talking like telescopes you look through with your eye. Like this is like one of those big dishes, you know. <laughs> I don't want to alarm Party anybody. Foul. That was just that was just my empty beer can falling on the ground. We're continuing. Party foul. Show. It was no, empty. so like it's, this is like this is like one of those big radio telescopes that you see like in New Mexico or whatever. And so like they kept getting this interference. And so like, Oh, there's a bunch of pigeons up there. Maybe pigeons keep pooping all over our telescope. And that's where the interference is coming from. And so they scrubbed all the pigeon poop off. This is a true story. I'm not making this up about the pigeon poop. (laughs) And then they're still getting it. It's so funny. Pigeon poop. (laughs) (laughs) They're still getting this, uh, interference. And so they did lots more research on it and they found this cosmic microwave background radiation, which is like everywhere in the sky. There's this remnant of the big bang. Whereas there's this, cosmic microwave radiation in the background of every direction you look. Maybe that explains why we only have a life expectancy of 80 years. We just die from radiation poisoning. <laughs> I don't think, I, I don't think it works that way, but <laughs> well, I mean, it could be true. We all just get, you know, the sun. Our cells get... just eventually die from radiation poisoning. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, that was that was that's good explanation. I understand yeah, that. Good explanation. AT&T. I don't think I really I don't think I really understand, but that is a good explanation. Well, I understand I what, what I was he going has with told this. me. I don't understand everything outside of that. Either. Right, exactly. I don't, I don't really I, mean. I don't really know off the top of my head <laughs> the exact theory as to like how we know that there's a big bang. Right. Uh I know I've heard it before, but I can't think of it. I but mean, it's super it, weird. It's one of the it's one of like the I guess scientific theories or whatever that I think is most plausible to the whole universe idea. Like, cause I mean, I mean, I don't know the extent of it now, but I remember when I was like learning about what it actually meant at the time I was in whatever science class I was in at the time in college, you know, that it made sense. I was like, Oh yeah, that makes sense. These atoms are coming together and it just explodes or whatever, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I get it. You know, the, the the terrible thing that I hate about science and the thing that I love about science is that, like, so in the late 19th century, you know, like late 1800s, uh, we thought that, you know, physics had pretty much come to an end. You know, like, yeah, well, we can just des- we can pretty much describe any situation through classical physics and classical physics century? is like, yeah, like 1800s. Oh, wow. So uh, like late 1800s, 1890s, 19- early 1900s. So we thought that like everything, you know, could be described with some classical physics problem. We just weren't smart enough to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Classical physics, as in like, if I throw a ball off a roof, how far will it go before it lands? You know, right. That's like a classical physics example. And then Einstein comes around in like early 1900s and then he starts spouting about theory of relativity, you know, and then special relativity and general relativity and space time. And then you got Edwin Schrodinger who starts throwing quantum mechanics in there. And then you're like, oh, wait. We're far from being over with this shit. Yeah. And the thing that I hate about physics, any science really, and love about science is that now it seems like anytime we get an answer, we get a thousand more questions. Mm-hmm. I'm not even in physics and I know what you mean. You know? There's just it's, always more questions to answer. Always. That's what that's what kind of makes like I don't know. See, that's like that's why that's me. why I, I went into physics. Yeah, that's just really. I wish I could understand it more because I would love, I would love to be able to like enjoy that kind of stuff. Me just, and Andrew were yelling at each other the other night because I was like, I just want answers. I was like, I want some answers. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Unfortunately, and we're never going to really get them in our not lifetime. Get the answers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's one of those. Side note: Did y'all read the back of this can? I didn't. No, no. I did not. The back it's, of the plastic, you mean? We have limited yeah. time, and I want to talk about something else though. So get through it. It says, no, it says captain's log, star date, blah, blah, blah. And they've got all these like cool terms in there. 
but it says at the very bottom, it says these hops are now incorporated in our Belgian white IPA, giving off supernova, uh, giving off supernova of flavor and aroma with banana, stone fruit, pear, and grapefruit. Mm. Okay. I would like I to taste say lime, I taste or I taste orange. I mean, yeah, I would like to say I taste the pear, but I don't. It's I definitely taste more orange than anything. I don't know why. Maybe it's the grapefruit. The grapefruit's pretty similar to orange. I like yeah, the, I, I like it says Captain's Log star I mean, date and then with a, a bunch citrus. of random numbers. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to I don't waste taste much. banana at all. I don't either. No. That would be an interesting mm. flavor for a beer though. Everybody drinks. I would all love right. banana. I don't know if I would love banana uh, in a beer, but I love like I love uh like actual banana flavor and artificial banana flavor. I love it all. Whatever I can you taste a little to bit give on me banana flavor. I can taste banana a little bit on the back burner. <laughs> mm. If you really think about banana while you're taking a drink, you'll you'll get a hint of it. Well, if I think about strawberry when I'm eating something, I'm gonna taste strawberry. I don't think that's entirely accurate. <laughs> I think it. I, I think it is. I think that it's kind of like how thinking about weird, gross stuff when you're eating kind of makes you want to throw up. Yeah, exactly. Like when you eat Taco Bell and think about Taco Bell. Yeah, when you eat a McDonald's chicken nugget and you get a piece of gristle and you're like, "What am I chewing on? An eyeball?" <laughs> yeah, then, at that point, you just on? gotta accept your fate and swallow it. Oh God, man! Chicken nuggets aren't even that bad. It's always mm -hmm. the hot and spicy. Mm -hmm. All right, what you did, what did you want to say? Straight really chicken foot. So yeah, I, I don't want to waste too much time here. I don't know where we're at. Who cares? We can go forever. But uh, oh, I, could, forever. I could go for a neighbors. long time. But I don't have enough beer to go for <laughs> much longer. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it, on the back it said like <laughs> supernova flavor or whatever. So real quick, I saw an article the other day talking about how Beetlejuice, which I said this earlier, not the movie, the star. Uh, it's like a really bright star that we can see in the night sky. Uh, but it's also a gigantic star and that it is very close to going supernova. Why do they call it Beetlejuice? I don't know. Just I mean, supernova is exploding, right? Like on a massive scale. Yeah, yeah basically. Is it bigger than a red giant? Is supernova bigger than a red giant? Is it like after well, it explodes? Two First different all, things. A red giant is just a massive sun. Yeah. Two different things. But they uh, expand supernova and then explode, right? Well, it, it depends. Well, it all depends. Like red, so a star can either expand out. So in a star, you have pressure versus gravity. All the nuclear fission going on inside the uh, inside the star causes pressure going outwards, and then you have the gravity of the star pushing inwards. And when pressure exceeds gravity, you got this. It expands out into this red giant, and it can either like expand until like it's really cold, and then you just have like this really cold red star, right? Or you can have this where gra when gravity wins over pressure, it condenses into a like a white dwarf, and then you have this thing, it's called the Chandrasekhar limit, and if you have 1.4 solar masses, then it can condense into something that goes super... It's a lot of shit to explain. But, uh... So, a supernova is basically when a star explodes. Yeah. Right? And so, Beetlejuice, they're saying it's very near supernova. And by near, it says within the next 100,000 years. On a universal scale, that's not a lot. You know? But very near between now and 100,000 years could mean tomorrow, or it could be 100,000 years, you know? Right. But when this thing goes supernova, when it explodes, it releases a crap ton of energy. And it's so close to Earth. I say so close. It's like 750 light years away, which is pretty far. But uh, I looked up, I was doing some research earlier, and they have a graph where, picture a graph, your x-axis is days right mm -hmm. and it goes zero ten a hundred a thousand right and so and then the y-axis is your apparent brightness like an apparent brightness is like a really tiny it goes like really low apparent brightness is like a really tiny star that you can barely see and then high apparent brightness is like a full moon and so it says when beetlejuice goes supernova mm -hmm. it's going to be as bright in the sky in daytime and nighttime it's going to be as bright in the sky as a full moon for 100 days. Be but like, crazy, that's dude. all it's going to be. It's not going to like do anything to Earth. It's just going to be really bright outside. No, they say it's too far away from Earth to actually like harm people with radiation or uh, for 100 particles days, or whatever. Though. Yeah, it's going to be like pretty much as bright as the moon for 100 days. 
That's pretty cool. As, That's as the full crazy. moon. And I, I don't know the, I don't remember what, exactly what I heard, but it's going to be daytime like outside all the time for like three weeks or something like that. Isn't it, That's wild, bro. So, so a supernova is basically a star explosion. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Okay. What is a black hole? But on a massive scale. A black hole is when you <clears throat> lit, when you take an object and smash it down to remember I was talking about densities earlier. Uh-huh. So your density is just like pretty much your mass divided by your volume. Right? So you have like you have uh me shrunk down into the size of a a piece of sand, right? So Mm -hmm. I'm still going to have my mass, but I'm going to be the size of a piece of sand. So I'd be that small, but you would still be picking up all 190 pounds of me. That'd be crazy. You know, weight and mass or different things. But That'd be kind of cool, actually. So a a black hole basically is... (laughs) Yeah, so a black hole basically is picking up... Or, sorry, is basically taking our sun and smushing all of it into the size of like a penny. But what causes it? Just that's what uh, that comes into the whole chance like of limit thing. Yeah. You know, so when you have a lot of gravity and it collapses and condenses condenses on itself, then it just keeps getting smaller, you know, and you just basically take everything and put it into this our entire sun or sometimes like I mean the biggest star ever you could think of and put it in the size of a corridor. And then you have the entire mass of the sun in this super tiny volume, so it has super high density. And that's why black holes are black, because light can't escape them, because they have so much density. Hmm. Does that make sense? That's some crazy stuff, bro. I mean, it makes sense to me, yeah. And I'm a beer and a half deep, so... (laughs) A 7.2 beer and a half deep, by the way. Don't make fun of me, okay? Basically, try try to pick up Andrew... When he's the size of a grain of sand. I mean, there's actual limits to these things, you know, where you can take Andrew's actual mass and you can figure out how small he would have to be to become a black hole. Mm -hmm. And it would probably be like smaller, like an electron or something. You know, you have to convince it. That would be nuts, dude. That would be really small. Yeah. And so, and then, yeah, they're just weird, you know. That's one thing I've always loved about physics is like just like the, conceptual stuff like to to be able to think about and understand it's like really cool yeah, yeah. And, the, and then that's where you get the whole wormhole thing from and black holes being able to teleport you through space or whatever because when you take space time so which when you think of it energy in that one spot yeah I mean a, a classical <clears throat> way of thinking about space time is putting an elephant on a trampoline as mm-hmm. opposed to like a toddler on a trampoline you put a toddler on a trampoline and it like barely dents the trampoline at all but you put an elephant on a trampoline and let's say the trampoline doesn't break and it's high off the ground, the elephant's going to like suck super far down into the trampoline. Right. And so basically try to get out of the hole. Basically, if you're in the hole with the elephant, try to get out. Yeah, you can't. Good luck. Yeah. That's basically the black hole is so dense and massive that it creates this gigantic like well in space time Mm -hmm. that you can't get out of, you know? Unless you have like like uh, like they use in the movies those two like ice picks to climb snow mountains, <laughs> and you can just climb the, side of the, the just world's largest ice picks. Black hole though. <laughs> okay, um, we're like a minute or a, a minute, an hour and eight minutes deep, and I want to talk about something else really quickly. We got to try to get burned through this one, but I was having a discussion right. with my brother the other day because obviously, a little over a month ago, I guess we landed another rover on Mars, right? Mm-hmm. And they're trying to find, obviously, with SpaceX and everything and Elon trying to find a way to get Um, us to Mars and have an actual civilization live there and have people actually be able to survive and everything. Um, My brother was just kind of like, is there even like, there's not even oxygen there. So like, what are we going to do? How are we going to create livable space on Mars? You know, like, obviously, we can we can make oxygen, you know what I mean? Like, in machines and stuff. Like, we could create it or whatever. But is that really, like, a plausible thing? And that's, I don't, I don't know. know. I, wanted to, I wanted to run that by you because I was, I'm all for trying to do it, right? Let's, we're going to have to eventually. Maybe not, I mean, obviously not in our lifetime, but 
at some point we're going to have to move on, whether it be like live on some replicated machine earth thing that we build that just floats through space or if it's actually on another planet. And I don't know. I just wanted to get your view on that because well, it would just it, it, to we me, had a debate it, about it. Space is <clears throat> space is so scary. Like, what's well, you're traveling for us something because so, we don't so have the ability or... to go. It's just like it's like like for us now, right? Think about all the people back in history that we learn about that, like Christopher Columbus when he was sailing, they didn't even know what was over here. He was just sailing because he thought he was finding finding a quicker route to India. You know what I mean? And he I found know, a whole other world, basically. But it's yeah. scary, it's scary yeah, yeah. in a different way to me because he can walk on the top of his ship and breathe and land in the new pl- new land and breathe. We can't breathe. Well, yeah, but there's different there. times so, is what I'm saying. Um, like, we just haven't I mean, experienced we, it yet. I, I mean, uh, but it's the not thing is you're, you're, wearing a, you're wearing a space suit, suit, right? I mean, something pokes a hole in it. Now you're screwed. Unless you develop something that you could implant in the body and you can now breathe on this planet. I don't think it's... It just, it would scare me. I don't well, know. Uh, my, for, my whole question for, was like, is it plausible to have a civilization built around, even if we don't have something like that, but if we just have like these dome enclosures that are in like the movies, you know, like Martian, the Martian and stuff. Like, is it, is it a Everybody plausible drinks. outcome? Yeah. I mean, Everybody so when you're drinks. talking about, when you're talking about Mars, like, uh, that's, that's where they, they talk about terraforming, you know, like, terraforming is a stupid word because terra means earth and we're not even going to be on earth anymore but uh, i guess earth is just a general term for ground but uh so basically what you're missing on mars is an atmosphere right like exactly they don't they have a they have a very thin atmosphere like the moon has no atmosphere because it doesn't have enough mass to hold an atmosphere because you gotta you gotta have enough mass to have enough gravity to hold all that atmosphere in you know yeah so mars doesn't have a has a very thin atmosphere and so the process of terraforming is you know uh i don't remember the i don't even remember how it starts but there's a way that you can go over there and you can you can do certain things to create doesn't have to be like just pure oxygen but you just create molecules that go up into the atmosphere and stay there so you can thicken the atmosphere basically that mm-hmm. way nothing I mean, that way you can have life because you can't have life without an atmosphere. That's pretty cool. Okay. So then, and then you incorporate oxygen into that. And there's a very important first step that leads to the rest of these steps that I can't remember. But basically, once you do that first step, then you got a pretty decent atmosphere. And then you start getting water. Once you get water, water will trap CO2. So now you start, now you start to get carbon dioxide out of the air. And you replace that carbon dioxide with oxygen. And then you start planting plants. Once there's like carbon dioxide uh, in the atmosphere, it's soaking up in the water. You plant like sea grass, you know, sea kelp that that absorbs carbon dioxide, mm-hmm. makes oxygen. And then the oxygen slowly builds up, you know, and then it gets to a certain level to where humans can basically live there and farm there. Right. And trees and plants that's, and all that kind of cool. stuff. But, all right. Well, I didn't know that. That's that answers cool. my question. Now you said that's like a theory or that's something that could actually happen. That's what they planned out. You know, I mean, Mars can hold an atmosphere. We just have to create one. I mean, it can. You know? And they've found they've uh, I mean, at least from what I've read and seen or whatever, they found like where there used to be creeks or whatever, you know, or, or rivers or whatever on Mars. Right. Yeah. They found signs of water near the poles, I think. And I saw recently with this, when they landed the new rover on Mars, they found like some ball or what, like some spherical ball. Everybody was making jokes about some baseball that Albert, Albert Pujols hit on the Astros back in 2005, which I thought <laughs> when was When it funny. hit the glass wall. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. like, so Dude, funny. I was there for that game, man. And yeah. I heard that thing. I, third, I heard that thing hit the wall. Yeah, that was. That it's was pretty impressive moment. to me that but, humans can, can like, they can like one hit home runs like that, but two. <laughs> Build an atmosphere? Like, we can go to a uh, planet and be like, oh, we're just going to inject it with this shit and make <laughs> this shit livable. Like, oh, yeah, cool, dude. Uh-huh. Yeah, that kind of answers yeah, my question. Because my whole idea was But you can't like, give me insane Wi Fi speeds? Like, what? <laughs> Elon's working on it, Andrew, okay? Elon's working, working on 88 gigs. 
eight or no, not 88 gigs, 88 megabits per second. That's nothing, dude. For people hey, you living know what? in the freaking woods, bro. But it's people in Africa, and, you know what? I got with satellite internet. internet paying one hundred and twenty dollars per month. I got five download, bro. I got five. <laughs> so you know what? I would take eighty-eight any day. Okay. I pay seventy dollars a month and get a gig. Yeah. Well, now yes, now I do. <laughs> but I didn't have that. But it would be cool. Before. It would be cool if like it was universally accessible, like without paying for it, like. Like if you're well, uh, no, no, nah. we still need to. Pay no, for I, it. I just it doesn't need to be. Well, no, I just mean, I just mean like in this situation, like, like say you're Absolutely. you're on a ship, and then that ship shipwrecks, and you're stuck on an island, but you have your cell phone, you can you can still call somebody because you got internet. You got to wait for the satellite to fly over you, <clears throat> but yeah. at some point you <laughs> will. Okay. And you can call somebody. Well, that's why SpaceX has sent like 80,000 satellites up into space. So there's always a satellite floating around. Yeah. You got like a 30 you second window, like, a month or whatever it is. No, it's like, hey, I'm on expensive. The... I don't think. Hey, I'm on this tiny island off the edge of boo-doo. And then you got to wait 30 minutes yeah. to call him back. Like, HughesNet is the one that really rapes you. I'm saying it straight up. Whoa. I don't know how many people are listening to this, but HughesNet, <laughs> if there's anybody that works there, Screw you, okay? Absolutely screw uh, you. I was paying uh, over $100 a month for very slow internet connection, and it was horrible, and it was not advertised. Suddenlink's on my on my list as well. You're not out of it any, either. Suddenlink's been on my shit Suddenlink list, Suddenlink sucks, dude. Suddenlink, since I was a kid, I want to fucking punch in the nuts. But Suddenlink's, Suddenlink's better than been on my shit list. I will say that. At least I can actually do this kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. If it wasn't yeah, for I if mean, it wasn't for sudden link, I'd be going. Yeah. Yeah. So when it comes to putting the satellites and up in space, and then like you're saying, putting atmosphere on Mars, you know, it's going to be hard, you know. But f- favorite quote from JFK is, "We do not choose to do these things because they're easy. We choose to do them because they're hard." Lame yeah. quote. That's great a great quote. quote. You know what that applies to? I was joking. You know what that applies to? Everything. Having to choose a final rating for this beer. He gave that speech at Rice University, so they put that in there. It was not lame because extra, it was in H-Town. <clears throat> H-Town? All right. Um, also, speaking of H-Town, this beer is not from H-Town, which is one of the first beers. Well, we, we did Montucky. That was not from H-Town, but this is one of the first, couple, like, yeah. yeah. This is one of like the first uh, craft beers that has been more or less from the Dallas Fort Worth area. We're expanding. Yeah. yeah well, kind of. We're trying. We're trying. You know, um, we're broadening our horizons. Yeah. Uh, but we do got to get down to the final ratings, guys. We're we're an hour and seventeen minutes in. Great episode. Why did this fly by so fast? Because we were having fun. That's why. Oh, it's it's uh from Grapevine, Texas. Yeah, it's up there by Dallas somewhere. Do you know I don't where know exactly uh, how far, but I know it's not. Don't it's you close. say it, Andrew. Do you know where Grapevine is? <laughs> oh God. It's north <laughs> of Dallas. <laughs> hey, no, you didn't even give us that. Like you weren't even like, oh, it's north of Dallas. You were just like, yeah, it's up in Texas. It's like up like, by Dallas. We're not yeah. doing this again. I almost, <laughs> I almost kicked Andrew off the podcast for this bullshit, okay? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna keep Whoa. mine. I think I said I think I said six four. I'm gonna keep it there. Yeah, uh, you did say six four. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep mine the same. I think as well. Um, I don't know. Reason being, I will say I have a decent buzz from it. Obviously, that's because the freaking seven point two, which everybody drinks, is cr- all right. I'm I'm pretty much out, but I'm gonna suck up as much as I can. Okay. <laughs> all right. To have to go get a new one just for this, just just for this, everybody drinks. Or I mean, have respectfully, one? you should, yeah. but I, I get it. If you, you only drink one during this whole podcast, you're a freaking loser. Yeah, it wasn't that good. And I was talking the whole time, so. He was doing a lot of talking. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to I don't want to tell you not to go try it, because I think if you're. um, I mean, I think everybody should try everything, but it's definitely a it's a decent beer, but I think you should not, get it just for the experience. Person try the, uh, each person should try a beer that we have on this podcast once. You know, I Absolutely. think you should Absolutely. try it just for the experience try and just for the can. Except for Hello Cello. Don't don't try that one. At, no, try well, it. Experience uh, our pain. You can try it. Experience it with us. Yeah, I think that's the whole point is we want to kind of 
you know, we, we want a community that's going to experience things with us. That's the whole point. We want to hear your feedback everywhere you go. Um, I guess that's true. But uh, <laughs> this is, I think this, this is a beer you should try. It's good. Um, I think the way Sean described it is perfect. It's like a, you never had a Hopadillo. It's just like a, a standard IPA mixed with a, a Blue Moon. I mean, that's that's the flavor I get pretty much right off the rip. Um, it's good, but I don't think it's good enough to change my rating after two. Nah. Have to drink probably about six of them before I change my rating. To be fair, after I drink about six of any beer that's a 7.2, I'm going to change my rating to a 10 because I'm going to be drunk as hell. So Absolutely. If I, if I were to drink, yeah, if I were to drink six beers that were 7.2, I would probably hate the beer because I would be sick. I would also probably be asleep at the same time. <laughs> I agree. Uh, Andrew, what are you doing? <clears throat> well, uh, I'm not going to go with a 6.4 because I was that tall leaving high school. So I'm going to go with a... <laughs> I think I said 7.3 at the start of this podcast. Did I not? Yep, you did. 7.4. <clears throat> wow. Yeah, a little bit of a raise. So you like High it. High roller. I like this beer. Uh, I watch. I love Blue Moon, and I'm okay with IPAs. So you put them together, and it's gonna be one of my favorite IPAs. I can tell you that. And it's a seven point two. That's a plus. It's not an eight. That was in the heavy hands, but I don't. I don't need an eight. Obviously, I just need a seven point two that has some good flavor. So I like this beer. You know, as difficult as this has been, I'm really, I'm, I'm really impressed with how we've kept our rating pretty, pretty solid throughout. I mean, obviously, I've been keeping up with it, so it's been a little bit easier. But it, it does help. That helps a lot. I, we've been pretty good, I think, so far through twenty-one weeks. We like got a hundred. We got a hundred numbers like, to choose from. So, like, like our, yeah. our, like, like our strike zone isn't moving. You know? Yeah, we're pretty good umpires. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it's wow. All right. Well. Hey, Randall. Yeah. Where can they find us at? Yeah, you can find us at uh, at Twitter at Off the Tap Pod. Uh, that's probably the best place to get in touch with us. Uh, that's where we're most active. Let us know how you feel about the beers. Give us beer recommendations. Give us topic ideas to talk about. Anything you want to hear us talk about. Uh, we also have an Instagram at Off the Tap Podcast. Um, that's fairly new. We're still we're still getting that up and rolling. But feel free to follow us and same there. You know, I'll be I'll be as active on that as well. Um, Facebook. Fifty retweets on our next tweet. I'll post a shirtless pic on the Instagram. Whoa! I don't. I, I don't. I. I don't even know if I want to see that. I you do. do. <laughs> I do. 100%. I, was jo- I was joking. I was joking. I do. Uh, Facebook as is long off as the tap podcast. You do not shave the nips before. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> the face. The Facebook is off the tap podcast. Uh, we're working on that on that one as well. Uh, the Patreon is off the tap podcast, right? Absolutely. I'm pretty sure everything is off the tap podcast. I think we've picked everything it pretty, is, pretty everything good. Is, you know? Everything's <laughs> off the tap podcast except for the Twitter because it wouldn't let me do it that long. So I'm sorry Man. about that. So you but, can find uh, us on a lot of things at off the tap podcast. And we have the website up. We have a website up. It's uh, off the tap podcast.com. Uh, that's where we're going to be having our merch whenever we get it up and rolling. Uh, right now we're working on getting all the episodes published um, as well as other things, but it, it's new. But feel free to visit it. And uh, let us know what We're you think. On up. Working on a little weekly weekly blog page is a possibility. Yeah, posting some uh, stuff on there, some discussions. Just kind of anything. We're just we're just floating around ideas, you know, having fun. That's what it's all about. And we can want y'all to find join us. us. You can also find us on pretty much anywhere that podcasts are available. Yep, uh, big ones also uh, obviously are Apple and Spotify. Uh, but anywhere really you get your your podcasts uh where that we should be there at least but yeah we should be there if they take us off let us know i'm gonna have an, i'm gonna have to talk to somebody yeah me too <laughs> um but yeah that uh that does it 21 weeks we are officially a drinking age podcast drinking in, age in essence, podcast in essence next next in, week will be in, uh, America. Uh, feeling 22 no yeah, next week's going to be, you. I think, a really fun episode. We kind of talked a lot uh, last week about like sports in general, but next week should be our uh, baseball-specific one, which I'm pretty excited about. Damn! Um, Outstanding. Yeah. We're going to uh, hit that one out of the park. Hell yeah. I'm pumped for this, dude. Pumped for this. Um, 
Yeah, that does it, guys. I mean, like, we all played baseball in high school except for me, right? You know, because I just rode the bench, right? No, you played. <laughs> I think you were a fantastic pitcher, Andrew. We'll get into that next week, okay? Uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll get all right, all right. I think that's it, man. I think that's it. Was it. Fun. nothing y'all want to say. Twas, twas fun. Mm. Twas a good one. I if think, you ain't getting yeah. dirty. You ain't getting far enough.